The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Lord Byron, if I recall correctly, first said, Sweet is revenge. But revenge is mine, saith the Lord, according to the Bible. The truth would seem to be that sweet indeed is revenge, while the moment lasts. But the victim of revenge will himself be avenged, one way or another, by a power not of this world. Surely the power of God. In any case, had Arnold Montresor not revenged himself on Fortunato Bellini and enjoyed to the full that moment of sweetness, he would never have experienced the shock and terror that surged through him when Inspector Murdaro said, Arno, I arrest you for the murder of Fortunato Bellini. Me? You arrest me? For murder? Playing the innocent will do you no good, Arno. I've got you dead to rights. I have found the body. Impossible. You couldn't. You... I mean, say, you... <laughs> you just slipped. How would you know it was impossible if you didn't know where the body was? But that was your second slip, Arno. A slip you wouldn't have made if you hadn't made the first the first? Yes. You committed the perfect crime, my friend. Perfect, except for one single, simple, little mistake. What mistake? What mistake? <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Cask of Amontillado was especially adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Richard Kiley. It is sponsored in part by imported Vigna Rosé wine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We were talking about revenge. I believe. Yes, revenge. An emotion, a passion that came to burn fiercely in the breast of a certain wine grower named Arno Montresor. A consuming fire he at last managed to quench with, oddly enough, a cask, a barrel of Amontillado sherry. It all began, this strange and terrifying tale, at the famous Montresor vineyards in Tuscany, Italy. There, on a certain day, in the office of Arno Montresor, Fortunato Bellini sealed his doom. But I must have the 1923 vintage, Arno. No other Amontillado will do. You must manage to find more for me. I would if I could perform miracles, but I can't. I've been in touch with every wine grower, every merchant in Spain. I've scoured all of Mantilla, where Amontillado is made... I can't find even a bottle of the 23 vintage, and you ask for barrels, casks. Well, a bottle is only a drop to me, you know that. Eh, you wouldn't be trying to raise the price on me. What? Considering the money you owe me, the loans I've made you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you... Are you out of your mind, Fortunato? How could I possibly make enough money to pay you back by raising the price of the Amontillado you drink? You don't drink that much. Which is why I have my suspicions about you, Arno. What are you... The catacombs beneath your vineyard. You took me down to the third level not so long ago and showed me. Why? Why, there must have been at least a half dozen casts of Amontillado. More than a year ago. There weren't a half dozen, there were only four. And you've drunk them all. If there is one bottle, one drop of 1923 Amontillado left in Spain, in the world, I can't find it for you. Now, this discussion is at an end. Not altogether. I have another matter to take up with you. The money you owe me. Well, what about it? 
I've been paying the interest for And I need the principal. Business has been bad, and I'm in need of money. I'm afraid, Arno, I must ask you to repay me. Repay? Fortunato, I don't think you realize what you're asking. I'm in no position at this time to... Come in. Ah, oh, Margarita, my dearest. I'm sorry to interrupt you, darling. And you, Signor Bellini. You do disturb me, Signor Montresor. Always. <laughs> but not in the way you mean. Well, uh, <clears throat> what is it, Margarita? Tonio is waiting to see you. It's urgent, he says. What's the trouble? Something about the dampness in the third level of the catacombs. He says it's getting worse and changing the temperature. Ah, yes, the dampness is increasing down there. I'll, I'll talk to him in a few minutes. Very well, darling. Good to see you, Signor Bellini. It's more than good to see you, Signora. It is a feast to my eyes. I can't help noticing. Good day. Eh, she uh, seemed offended with me, your wife. You never took your eyes off her. Oh, can you blame me? So young, so... About the money I owe you, Fortunato. Mm. One week, I know. One week? You know our agreement. The loan's payable on demand, or... Oh, you can sell me out, but there was never any thought of that. There is now, I'm afraid. But you... You wouldn't. You can't. I must. I need the money. You've got to give me more time. I'll do anything you ask. Anything within reason. Within reason, you say, eh? Yes. What is it? Well, you know how I feel about your lovely wife. Just looking at her makes me feel young again. What are you saying? Well, the thought has crossed my mind more than once, I know, that... Uh, and what a pleasure it would be if she would come to dinner with me one night. Well, yes, we'd be delighted to. And not we. Not you. Her. Alone. If you mean what I think you mean, get out. Very well. Oh, no, no. Get out, I said. I'm going. But remember... You have one week from today. All the filthy obscene. Yes, come in. I just saw Signor Bellini leave. If you can see Tonio now. Arno, what is it? Oh, nothing, nothing. Something's happened to upset you. I can see it in your face. What is it? Oh, Bellini, he's... Given me a week to repay the money I owe him or he'll sell me out. Oh, no. But that's not all. What got me angered was... Yes? He said... He said he'd be willing to give me an extension if... If you'd have dinner with him. What you mean is if I... Yes. Oh, of all the... The thought of it. That fat rip... Repulsive. But, Arno, darling, what are you going to do? Can he take the vineyard if you don't pay him in a week? The vineyard, the wine stocks in the catacombs below, the house, everything. But we'll be ruined. Yes, ruined. Oh, my dearest. There must be something we can do. Something. If you think of something, Margarita, let me know. <laughs> said you were here to see me, I didn't believe it possible. What a pleasure, Signora Montresor. What a very real pleasure to discover I was wrong. Why would you think my paying you a visit, Signor Bellini, an impossibility? To be altogether honest with you, Signora uh, Margarita, if I may say. You. Of course you may, Fortunato. <laughs> I, I'd always thought you didn't exactly care too much for me. To be altogether honest with you, I don't. Then why are you here? If you force Arno to repay what he owes you in one week, he'll be ruined. Yes? You offered to give him an extension of time if... If I would have dinner with you. Yes? I've thought about it. Suppose... 
suppose I came to lunch, say. Arno and I don't see much of each other during the day, and I'm often out shopping, so there'd be no need to explain where I'd been. Wonderful. If you cancel Arno's debt altogether. Cancel it? Totally. Oh, my dear... You are as clever as you are desirable. But I'm afraid you take me for a fool. Why? Forgive the debt altogether and enjoy your company only once. When by giving extensions of time, I can enjoy it many times over. (laughs) What do you take me for? An extension wouldn't help very much. But it would help when he needs help. It's either that, Margarita, or ruin for you as well as him. (laughs) <laughs> Lunch, then. Say tomorrow at one. Tomorrow at one. I said, where have you been all afternoon? Ah, oh, no, dearest, I told you. Shopping. What did you buy? Uh, nothing. I couldn't find what I wanted. A, a bag, a new bag to go with those shoes I bought last week. And I thought I might find a, a hat to go with... You were with Bellini. Isabella told me. Isabella? His daughter. You know his daughter. The one he sent to visit her aunt for the afternoon. Only the aunt wasn't at home. And she came back. To find you with her father. In her father's bed. I did it for you. Did what for me? Shame me. No one need ever know. I know. Me. I know. I want to die. I have died. Arno. Darling. Darling. Listen to me. Please listen. I love you. Only you. I don't want to hear. Please. Oh, please. Since the day of our marriage, I have watched you work yourself to the bone to keep the Montresor vineyards going, to hold on to the heritage, your heritage of more than a century. I have so admired you for what you do, so loved you for the man, the husband you are. I couldn't bear to see you ruined, and so I helped you in the only way I knew, the only way I could. Bellini is going to extend the loans. Another... The devil with the loans. And Bellini and his extensions. You stand there and tell me you couldn't bear to see me ruined. And in the same breath admit you ruined me. No, no. Ruin me as a man. Ruin me as a respected member of the community. You think everyone will know about this? With Isabella and her tongue? I can hear them laughing behind my back. All of them. Ah, no. I beg you, don't talk this way. Isabella won't talk. No one will ever... I will! And I can never look at you again without knowing what you did. I can never hold you in my arms. Never sleep with you again without knowing. Adolphus! Ah, no! I could kill you for what you've done to me. Kill you! Your hands. My throat. Ah, no! Kill Kill Margarita. Margarita. He's dead. Yes. And you should be for what you've done. Oh, so gentle. Sweet. How beautiful and desirable. What am I to do? What am I to do? body must be hidden. Hidden. But how? How could I? Yes. That's it. The catacombs. Uh, alive. Uh, He's alive. Oh. Oh. My, my throat. Fast. Arno. Arno, what? I can see only your head and shoulders. Where am I? Does it matter where you are? 
What are you doing? Walling you up. Walling me? You know the catacombs as well as I do. The outer walls have caved in in places. There are openings that can be walled up. No one the wiser to what lies behind them. Oh, no. Ah, no. No. Another stone. Two more. Only two more. I love you. I did what I did because I love you. And I love you. Then why are you doing this? Pull the stones away. Tear them down. No. I cannot. I will not. You are mine. But you became his. You love me. And you loved him. No. Gave yourself to him. For your sake. You didn't want him. How can you say? Because it could be true. How do I know it isn't? How will I ever know? Oh, my God. I can't believe this. But I just said I... Uh, I don't believe. But my mind is stained with a thought. My... My heart is shattered by it. You must die. My darling, you must... If killing me, revenging yourself on me, will help you, Arno, put in the last stone. I, I, there is nothing left for me now. Nothing of me but my love for you, Stone. Put it in place. Yes. Yes. I... I love you. I love you. I... I love you. I will always love you. His heart, his soul, smashed to bits. Arno Montresor sends his wife to her death, walling her up on the first and uppermost level of the catacombs. Oscar Wilde, our old friend said, Each man kills the thing he loves. All my life, I've never been able to understand what he meant by that. Perhaps I do now. Perhaps you do too. I'll return shortly for Act Two. It has been said. And yet it's hard to see how the murder of Margarita Montresor by her husband Arno will ever be discovered. For he has carefully walled her up on the top level of the catacombs beneath his vineyard. It's possible, indeed altogether likely, that had he been content with that, he would never have been found out. But a consuming passion to revenge himself on Fortunato Bellini has taken possession of him now. A passion that is to drive him into making one single, simple, little mistake. Come in, Isabella. Come in. What an unexpected pleasure. Sit down. Have a glass of wine. This uh, Lacrima Christi is particularly good. Thank you. Well, now, why have you come to see me? I'm not sure, but... Guilt, I suppose. Shame. What do you mean? The story's all over town. That you and Margarita have split up. That she's left you. Is it true? Not entirely. I... I've let people believe that because I don't care what they think, but... You, I can tell the truth. I threw her out. Yes. And you can tell me the truth because I'm responsible. I'm the one who came running to tell you about her being with my father. Is that why you feel guilty? Ashamed? If I had minded my own business, none of this would have happened. You and Margarita would still be happily together. A false happiness built on unfaithfulness. Perhaps. But I had no right to do what I did. It was just that... I was so surprised. So shocked at finding her with my father together. I lost my head... I must apologize. Beg forgiveness. I don't know where Margarita is, and I don't want to know. Have you told your father about finding him and Margarita oh, together? No. I wouldn't dare. 
I think he would kill me. And you must never tell him either. <laughs> don't worry. I don't intend to. Oh, another glass? Thank you, no. I'll go now. Well, let me see you to the door. Carnival week begins tonight. I suppose you're looking forward to it. <laughs> you know better than that, Signor Montresor. I know... Everyone knows that I never go to the carnival. Well, why not? Come on now. You know. I can never find anyone to take me. That's why. There isn't a boy in town who'd want to be seen with anyone as plain and unattractive as me. Plain? Unattractive? Oh, oh you shock me. I've always thought of you as... Uh, well, anything but unattractive. Oh, come on now. Oh, I mean it. Well, don't misunderstand me. I mean, well, I'm almost old enough to be your father, and I wouldn't want you to think... Well, what I'm saying is, if you'd be willing to go to the carnival tonight with me... You? Well, so why not? I'm alone, you're alone. We could at least be alone together. Yes, and you'd have the fun of going to the carnival at last. Oh, I don't know. I do. I'll call for you at ten. I won't take no for an answer. Oh, Signor Montres. And another thing. Call me Arno. See you at ten? Yes. I'll be looking forward to it. Oh, and so will I. So will I. Arno. Inspector Madero? The police? Yes, Signor. Well, what do you want with me? A matter of routine, Signor, nothing more. It's about your wife. Yes? What about her? It's come to our attention at headquarters that your wife is no longer living with you. Correct. Would you mind telling me why? Well, we've separated. For what reason? If you'd rather not tell... No, no, I'm happy to tell. We simply couldn't get along anymore. We were incompatible. Constant quarreling, it became too much, so we decided to split up. And she went elsewhere? Yes, where? I don't know. You don't? No. I don't. To tell you the truth, I don't care. You have no idea where she might have gone? Back to her parents, perhaps? Relatives? Well, her parents are dead. It's for relatives. Why are you asking all these questions? There is some talk of murder. M murder? Oh, no, you mean she's met with foul play, been murdered? No, 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 no. The talk about town is that... Uh, you know how gossip spreads, senor. And, of course, there's nothing to this. Still and all, the police must check it out. The talk is that you murdered her. I? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is silly, of course. Well, it's ridiculous. It's utterly and completely ridiculous. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, Inspector, I have much to do with... Uh, the relatives... The what? Your wife. You said she has relatives. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, a sister in, in, in Rome and um, another in, in Florence. Mm, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me their names and addresses. Well, certainly. Only... Well, if you ask me, Inspector Madero, the police are making a mountain out of a molehill. A matter of routine, Signor. Routine. Nothing more. Enjoying yourself, Isabella? Oh, Arno, I am. I am. You have no idea. Thank you for bringing me. <laughs> it's so wonderful. There must be thousands and thousands of lights. All kinds of colors and the music and the people in costume and... Fireworks! Arno, the fireworks have started. Let's get closer. Well, we can, but pushing through this crowd is going to be... Hey, what... Just stop blocking my way. Why, why, Arno, it's me, Fortunato. Father, I didn't know you were dressing up as a court jester. Yes, yes. How are you, Arno? Well enough, Fortunato, and you? Well, fine, fine, except uh, I've been a little troubled, a little puzzled, not hearing from you, especially after I gave you a three-month extension on the loan. Well, I've been very busy, Fortunato. Very busy. Harvest time, you know. I, I just haven't had a moment to myself. Yes, but still and all. <laughs> well, never mind. 
This is a night for fun and pleasure, which reminds me, uh, have you managed to find some 23 Amontillado for me? Well, the truth is, Fortunato, that... Now, I don't want to get your hopes raised, You but... have found some. No, 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 not yet, not yet, but I I may. Now, I say I may have located a barrel of it in Mantilla. Oh, uh, old task. Oh, if that is only true. My agent is checking. I'll let you know. Well, as soon as you do, don't waste a minute. And get it over from Spain as fast as you can. I'll do my best. Well, see you later. See you later. Look! Oh, Anna, look! It's It's some side, isn't it? It certainly is, Senor Montresor. Oh, oh. Inspector Madero. Well met, Senor. And isn't this uh, Signorina Bellini with you? Yes, Isabella, this is Inspector Mordero of the police. How do you do? Enjoying the carnival, I hope. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. Oh, Arno, by the way, she didn't go to her relatives. What? Your wife. She didn't go to her sister in Rome or Florence. We checked. They haven't seen her. Oh, well, uh... (laughs) She must have gone elsewhere, then. No, of course. The question is, where? You have no idea, as you said, senor. No? No. Yes. Well, I'll just have to keep looking till I find her. Arno. Arno, take me home now. I shouldn't have come to your house in the first place. Oh, just another glass of wine, Isabella. Uh, No. I... I can't seem to get up from the chair. What's happened to me? I've drugged you. That's what's happened. Drugged me? To make killing you, murdering you, easier. Murder? You stupid, ugly little fool. You really believe me when I said I found you not unattractive? That I'd be delighted to escort you to the carnival? What? Arno, what are you saying? I'm saying that I'm going to do the same with you that I did with Margarita. Wall you up in the catacombs below. You... You killed her? Then walled her up? Oh, no. No, she was alive when I did it. At least she was when I put the last stone in place. But she didn't last long after that, I'm sure. It couldn't have been more than an hour or so before she suffocated to death. Suffocate? I've got to get out of here. I can't move. No, you can't, so you might as well stop trying. You haven't a chance, Isabella. Not a chance. Why are you doing this to me? Revenge. Revenge for what your father did to me. Revenge for what Margarita did to me. Revenge for what you did to me. I? You are right, you see. If you hadn't come running to me, falling over yourself to tell me what you'd seen, I'd never have known, Margarita. My beloved Margarita. I'd never have known she'd been unfaithful. But you had to tell me. You and your wagging, gossiping tongue. I... I didn't think... I'll pick you up in my arms. No. I'll carry you down to the catacombs. At the second level below. No. And wall you up as I walled up Margarita. Please. Think what it would be like. As slowly one stone after another goes into place. A growing coffin lid for a stone coffin. Think of the agony that lies ahead when the last stone is placed and mortared in tight. Tight. And the air is cut off. And slowly, in agony and horror, you suffocate. Smother to death. Tell me now, little gossip. What are you to say to that? Hmm? Nothing? I'm holding you in my arms, looking into your eyes. Eyes filled with fright, with terror. You have nothing to say. Hmm? Oh, you must have something. Surely there's some word you can speak, some sound you can make. That's it, that's it again, again. Revenge. Arno 
Cardinal Montresor bears the numbed body of Isabella away to the catacombs below as the terror in her heart pours from her throat. And if I'm not mistaken, Fortunato Bellini will be next in line for Arno's vengeance. We'll see when I return shortly for Act Three. Our theme, as I have said, is revenge. But in the cask of Amontillado, we are also dealing with the perfect crime. What more perfect place for concealing a body, concealing it for even centuries, than in the wall of a catacomb, an ancient burial ground beneath the earth, itself a house of bones and skulls and skeletons. Arno Montresor has done this with his unfaithful wife, Margarita, and now with Isabella, daughter of Fortunato, who seduced Margarita. But, as with all perfect crimes, the criminal inevitably goes one step too far. Worried, worried, sick, Arno. What could have happened to Isabella after she left you? Fortunato, my good friend, I, I wish I could tell you, though... Really, I do think you're worrying unnecessarily. Now, what do you mean, unnecessarily? You say you brought her home last night at 12.30. That when I returned from the carnival at 3 this morning, she was not in the house. And here it is 2 in the afternoon the next day. Where is she? Well, you ask me, she may have met with some friends and stayed with them. No, no, I, I don't think so. It, it isn't like her, not like her at all. Uh, I must go to the police. I I should have gone to them before this. Oh, wait. Uh, wait a little while yet. She'll show up. And by the way, I uh, I think I may have a surprise for you tonight. Hmm? A pleasant surprise. Well, what do you mean? Uh, you'll see. The Amontillado. You have found me some Amontillado. Oh, I didn't say that. But that's what you mean. Where did you find it? How, how, how much of it? Oh, no, no. You're running ahead of yourself and me. I said nothing about finding any Amontillado. You knew how much it means to me. The craving I have for that 1923 vintage. I know, I, think... I know. And believe me, when I tell you I've moved heaven and earth to find some for you... And you have. I didn't but... say that. And I'm not going to say another word until... It... Well... Until I'm sure I have the um, uh, uh, the surprise for you. And when will that be? <laughs> well, perhaps tonight. Perhaps tomorrow. Perhaps never. I'll send a message to you. All right, keep moving. I want those grapes in before sundown. Senor. Senor Montresor. A word with you? Oh, Inspector, I'm very busy, as you can see. I'm... Only a few minutes, no more. Oh, well, what? Uh, Signor Bellini, you know him, I think? Yes, we're very old friends. He has reported his daughter missing, Isabella. You took her to the carnival last night, is that right? Yes, that's right. Why? Why? <laughs> I've felt sorry for her. I've begun to learn what it's like to be lonely, and I've just... Felt sorry for her. A girl her age should have some fun out of life. Lord knows there's little enough. True, true. Uh, about your wife, would you have any news for me? News? Have you heard from her? A letter, a message of some kind? I... No, I... I... Well, if you do, be sure to let me know. I will. <laughs> Now, I must get back to my work. All right, you there. Bring up the next car. Uh, one thing more, senor. Yes, yes, what? I understand that the vineyard is built on catacombs, early Christian catacombs beneath us here. Well, yes, where my house stands over there used to be a monastery. Of course, that was centuries ago. Mm, interesting, very interesting. You know, I have never been inside a catacomb. Oh, is that so? No, no, not those baskets. No, those baskets. Even when I was in Rome... I was wondering if you'd mind if I went down into yours. Why, no, not at all. I'll take you down myself sometime. Yes, 
Excuse me, senor. Excuse me. I'm, I'm wondering if you might have seen a girl. She's 18. Her name is Isabella Bellini. And uh, uh, Excuse me, senorina. Excuse me. Uh, uh, do you happen to know Isabella Oh, Bellini? Sonato. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, she hasn't come home. No one has seen her. Everyone I've asked is... What are you is talking it? about? Isabella. Oh, would I be out here on the second night of carnival if I hadn't... Didn't you get my message? Oh, what message? I what? found her. What? I had to come into town late this afternoon to pick up the cask of Amontillado. Amontillado? A, a, a cask of Amontillado? Yes, that's the surprise. My agent at Montilla several weeks ago, he, he found a whole cask. No. 1923 vintage. Oh. <laughs> anyway, it arrived today, and when I came into town to get it, I ran into Isabella. A cask? A whole cask? I, uh, I took her to my house. Dead on her feet from lack of sleep, and my house was the closest, ah, so... Uh, then, then she's safe. Good, good. Uh, but to why? At my place, too, of course. Come on along. What a lucky night for you, my friend. Yes. You found your daughter and your favorite wine. Good Lord, Arno. How far down into your infernal catacombs must we go? To the third level. The lowest. This is the second. One more. Why did you have to... Oh, oh. Careful. Oh, lots of the walls have broken down. Take care not to trip on broken stone. And now that I, I've turned my ankle, you tell me. Now, why did you have to bring the cask, a whole cask, down to the lowest level? The dampness. Hmm? Very damp. Dampest part of the catacombs. See, the walls here are sweating with condensation. Yes, but why did you have to, <laughs> to bring... I'm afraid all you know about wine, Fortunato, is how to drink it. When a place is damp, it's cool. The damper, the cooler. And casks of wine must be stored in... Oh, here we are. Uh, precede me, huh? Oh, yeah. Hold the torch high to give light ahead. The warm places to store wine. Bones, skulls, skeletons. More a grave than a wine cellar. A grave? Yeah. Yes. A grave of people buried here centuries ago. And now... Your school... Your grave, fool. So, you're coming to your senses, Fortunato. Good. Because I want you to feel. I want you to savor every moment of horror that lies before you. My head. But I know. But what, what, what's happened? I knocked you out. I picked up a rock and knocked you out of it. But why? What? What's this, my... My arms? Well, my legs, I, I, I can't move them. Because you're manacled to bolts in a wall. Oh, what are you doing to me? Walling you up, my friend. Oh. As I walled up Margarita, walled up Isabella. Oh. So you can die in agony of oh. horror. Die oh. of suffocation oh. as they did. Oh, no. Oh, no, let me go. Release me, I, I beg you. You can beg till your tongue rots no. in your mouth. It'll do you no good. Anything. I'll, I'll do anything you wish. I'll give you anything you wish. You're doing that already, giving me exactly what I wish. Revenge, Fortunato. Revenge. That's it. That's it, fool. Fight to free yourself while I put a little stone in place. Think. Think of what's to come. When the last stone, this one goes in place. Hmm? Darkness. Blackness. The blackness of the grave. A grave made of walls covered with wet slime. A grave for the living. For you. You die slowly. Slowly die of suffocation. No. The last stone. See, fool? No. See? Watch now as I put it in place. Watch. Eyes can't tear themselves from it, eh? Let me look into them. Your eyes. And enjoy. Remish. Taste the hideous fear, the ghastly horror of your soul. Oh, no. In the place it goes. In the place I must. Now. No, no. Inspector Matero. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Why, in a way, Signor Montresor. It's at your invitation. I invited you? Several weeks ago. You recall I mentioned that I'd never been down in the catacombs and you said you would take me on a tour sometime. Oh, that, yes. Well, 
I'm delighted to do so, but but not today. I haven't the time. I'm, yeah, I'm afraid the tour of the catacombs must be made today. It's impossible, Inspector. I assure you, if I had the time to take you on a tour, I'm I... sorry I should have made myself clear. I'm talking about me taking you on a tour. You taking me? Oh, yes. I've already seen them. Your overseer showed me around this morning, uh, after I showed him the search warrant. What are you trying to tell me? That you're under arrest for the murder of Signor Fortunato Bellini, his daughter Isabella, and your wife, Margarita. Oh, you're out of your mind. No, but I think you were out of yours. I must congratulate you, Signor. You came close, very close. To committing the perfect crime. But you overlooked one single factor. One very small thing. What? Uh, we'll go down. And I'll show you. <sighs> no. Yes. Fortunato's body. Exposed to view. The wall torn down. How, how did you find him? We didn't. But who broke the wall down then? No one. It collapsed of its own weight. You see, Signor, the one mistake you made, the one thing you forgot, was the dampness on this third level. The excessive moisture. The wetness. The cement. The cement wouldn't dry. It didn't dry. So, as always with the perfect crime, there is some slight imperfection. Indeed, so very slight is not to be noticed by the murderer. To his deep regret. I'll be back shortly. of our adaptation of The Cask of Amontillado, a friend of mine visiting the studio said, you know, E.G., this isn't the Poe story exactly as he wrote it. I agreed that it wasn't and explained that there's such a vast difference between story writing and play writing that no adaptation can follow any story exactly. However, I also explained that our respect and admiration for Edgar Allan Poe impelled us to retain all of the original story where possible, and, above all, its chilling horror. We have reason to think Mr. Poe is pleased, and that you are too. Our cast included Richard Kiley, Francis Sternhagen, Roberta Maxwell, Leon Janney, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Well, this may give you a lift. The morning paper. Page one. Shooting victim succumbs. Joseph Wilson, age 37, died at Mercy Hospital last night as the result of a mysterious bullet wound inflicted while he was driving along the old high road. Wilson, a plumber by trade, leaves a wife, Helen, and two children, ages eight and three. Let me see that. <laughs> well, you have the right. Not many men get to see their own obituaries. Sure gives a man a funny feeling. I'll bet. The victim's widow said he will be buried in Clendon Cemetery. <laughs> that policeman sure did it up thoroughly, didn't he? Well, they could scarcely release a story that you died without being nice enough to bury you. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. <laughs>